I mentioned in a recent demo that a standard deviation of the residuals, which serve as proxy for earnings management, alone as a number, does not mean anything, unless it is compared with another. There are many ways in which we can do a comparison. One is to look for a periodic trend. An example of this is found in the video regarding an event study. The other option is to compare standard deviation by groups or portfolios. And this is what we are demonstrating in this video. In this example, we have 111 firms with 9 years of data, and year 1 is for the lag data. Just like in the previous videos, we have net income, but this time it is represented by the earnings before extraordinary items. We also have cash flow from operations, gross revenues, receivables, assets, and property plan and equipment. Notice also that we have an additional variable called EPS, or earnings per share. That is because our goal in this example is to know whether earnings per share varies with earnings management in the year 9. That is, do firms with higher standard deviation of the residuals have higher earnings per share, or is it the opposite? In other words, is there a trend in year 9? We compute the same variable specified in a model by first determining total accruals, lagged values of assets, revenues, and receivables, the delta or change in the revenues and receivables. Then finally, we get the scaled values of total accruals, the value 1, the difference between the changes in revenues and receivables, scaled property plan and equipment, and the return on assets. If you want to know how we got these variables, please review the introductory video for the modified Jones model. Then we run a linear regression using the variables. You can also find in the previous tutorial the steps in regressing the variables. After executing the regression, the output tables will pop out. As you can see, the R squared is only 26%, but this is very common in accounting research. We can find that the F test shows significance of the model, and the individual coefficient except the first one are statistically significant. Back to the data, a new column was automatically added. If you do not see this, then you might have forgotten to save the unstandardized residuals when you were in the regression dialog box. Now we can compute the standard deviation values. From Analyze, point to Compare Means, then click Means. We need to put firms into portfolios based on the standard deviation of the residuals. Therefore, we need the standard deviation for each firm. So we select the firm identifier and move it to the independent list. We move the unstandardized residuals to the dependent list. Click Options and make sure that the standard deviation is selected. Click Continue, then OK. Now what you will see in the output window is a table of standard deviations for each firm. Copy this.